welcome to day two of Call of the North presented by Bell. This is, of course, the online qualifier for Toronto's Northern Arena event taking place at Fan Expo Canada September 1st to 4th. So be sure to get your tickets for that so you can be a part of all of this. Plus, it's Fan Expo, so a lot of fun there. I'm your host, Marissa Roberto, and it's not just me, of course. We're going to go to our casters in just a second. But if you missed it yesterday, we went from 8 to four. So let's take a look at that bracket to see what that looks like and see who's left. Yeah, so there was a lot of mayhem happening yesterday, but these are the teams that are left. CLG Red, they competed in last year's Northern Arena unsuccessfully. Yesterday, they lost to Insomnia Esports 2 nothing, and here they are taking them on again after winning their next two matches. The first against X-Fire 6-9 in a best of one, and then against their known rivals, the ladies of Selfless Gaming, eliminating them 16-13 in an intense matchup. Insomnia Gaming lost to in the second stage of the winner's bracket against Synthetic 2, nothing, which bumped them down to the lower or loser bracket and saw them taking on Earthroot Gaming in the last best of one battle of the night. They won that one 16-3. We'll have to wait to see who the winner will be of that matchup so we know who plays Synthetic, which should prove to be quite a task considering the battle they put up with Ace Gaming. You know they want to see them in the finals again as they lost in a best of three to nothing. Our final match of the day will be the grand final against Ace Gaming, who have been the favorites of this online qualifier, winning every best of three played to nothing. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens, but be sure to use the hashtag call of the North and let us know what you think on Twitter. We want to hear your questions. We want to answer them. We want you to take part in all of this. Right now, we're going to go to the casting booth with Van Silly and Birthday Boy Launders. <laughs> That's All right. right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marissa. That's right. It is Launders' yeah. birthday today. Oh, hey. All As right. you could see, he's maybe not, like, you know, he's usually a monotone, quiet kind of guy, but yeah. from the look of it, it might be a little bit more today. You said I look great. You always look great. Let me look at that hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? What did you do for your birthday? How old are you, by the way? Uh, 26. Oh, still a young yeah, guy. We got the analysis cam. Yeah. I, went on, I went on a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You went on a boat? Yes. Like the Lonely Island people style. Is that? I'm on a boat, yeah. Yeah. Were you wearing your pashmina scarf? Pashmina scarf? Yeah. My pashmina scarf? Yeah. I don't have one. Oh, man. Uh, you have one. I do have one. <laughs> you but... cast in one. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep those details just on, on you. But <laughs> yeah. happy birthday, man. Uh, we're actually getting ready to cover, uh, I guess, the funnel matches that we'll have today for the Cold of the North presented by Bell. So four teams, as Marissa mentioned before, and the first one that we're going to be covering is Insomnia Esports versus CLG Red. Now, Insomnia Esports versus CLG Red, they pretty much destroyed CLG Red two to nothing uh, on that upper round one. Now it's a chance for CLG Red to try to make a comeback and... Uh, prove that they're, they deserve a spot here uh, in Toronto during the Fan Expo from September 1st to September 4th. But the thing is, it's only a one map. So it's no best of threes, it's one single map, it's do or die, and they have to step up. Yeah, I mean, they already had their chance in the best of three, right? Now it's just pretty much fighting for survival here, and they've yep. got uh, to, they've got an easy route to the finals relatively. I mean, this, this team that they're going to play, they've lost to already, but they uh, have the ability to beat them. Like, mm -hmm. they, they can do it. So, I mean, if it's one map, if there's going to be an upset, it'll happen then. And uh, as a second chance, you know, they have some info to work off of, right? So um, I think there's a good probability that they could do it. I mean, mm -hmm. CLG Red, honestly, they have, they, like, they have good players. Like, they can they can beat a pug, you know yeah, what I mean? Oh, they for should sure. be able to. Yeah, and at, at that same time, when you're talking about they could beat a pug or in general, they did maybe struggle against Insomnia Esports, but it played a great match against Selfless GG yesterday. I mean... It finished, I think, 16 to 13, but at the same time, it was it was nail biting for this matchup. It's a rivalry, North American rivalry between these two female teams, and Selfless Gaming actually put up a good fight against Ace. And to see that CLG Red was able to come up on top of that in the end, maybe they still have some so, some arsenal left in the tank to actually move off, move forward and face off against Synthetic Gaming later. Uh, that being said, though, I don't know if you're able to see a bit of that match. I don't know. I think you left, but there was this one round between. Um, I'm get on a boat. Yeah, <laughs> there was this one round between CLG and Selfless where um, the CLG Red actually lost a four versus two on a retake by Pistols, and it was like a last second Shame. defuse. So it was a very close game, but uh, players like Steph Harvey, she actually stepped up big. I mean, you looked on her Twitter feed, you guys could give her a follow. I think it's at Miss Harvey. A lot of people were just commenting how she was playing lights out, and we're hoping to see that today too against Insomnia. Uh, but speaking about Insomnia, uh, they also had 
uh, a loss, and that was actually against uh, Synthetic. So basically, whoever is winning either of these matchups, it's always a revenge match versus the others. Because if Insomnia wins, they had the revenge opportunity versus Synthetic. If CLG wins this, well, they got their uh, revenge opportunity already versus Insomnia. So let's talk a little bit about Insomnia, about the players a little bit here. Because for those of you that haven't tuned in yesterday, um, they are a local Canadian team. Let's talk about them a little bit more in terms of a roster. Yeah, so again, this is a, a team where they're uh, players who don't have much experience, but they have some land experience, actually. Like, uh, I know Crux and AGN go to a lot of the local Toronto lands. I myself like won a land with AGN mm -hmm. uh, when we were playing as a pug, and, and uh, they have some good individual talent. I actually heard that I think Stronglegs is his name. Yep. Is uh, a player to watch. Seaside said he's actually really good, and mm -hmm. maybe he's uh, seen matches that he's played before. Yep. So. Yeah, some faith in this team. They have a uh, they have a, a little bit to show. They also took a or they took synthetic into OT on one map, right? Lost by uh, yep. only like six rounds on the other map. So clearly competitive, and um, they have a really big opportunity to make a final here. So that's, uh, they all have to get through synthetic again, and CLG Red will kind of be the first um, the first uh, hill to climb. But I think uh, it. It could go both ways. Yeah, for sure. So as we mentioned before, we're looking at whoever's... It's pretty much predicted what we what we thought was going to happen in this bracket. I mean, you have Ace Gaming that went tool all the way. So they already have at least guaranteed a spot to the finals, uh, the championships for uh, the CSGO Northern Arena in Toronto at Fan Expo. The thing is, though, uh, they're going to have to play at least the finals today uh, for seedings because they are going to be meeting up with 16 or 14 other teams, these two teams for the Call of the North. This is what we're playing for. So this online qualifier is going to be between Ace Gaming and whoever makes it out towards that lower bracket and they will get a chance to uh, represent Canada or even female the female scene uh, at the call of at the CSGO championship for Northern Arena. So we have the veto process right now. Uh, we've seen all the bands going through and at the end of the day it is going to be um, Cash which is actually looking quite good for CLG Red. That's the map that they won against uh, Selfless uh, yesterday. And that's where Miss Harvey played lights out. What are your thoughts here on this matchup between these uh, between these two teams on cash? There's not a lot of data to go off of on for either team on this map. Yeah, it's one of the maps that is one of the most played maps. I'd say like cash is like the the dust two of, of CS. I think a lot of people still like mainly play dust two mm -hmm. when they're like starting to learn the game or just it, the mo in terms of. Uh, hours played, but uh, cash is, in my opinion, like become like the most staple map for some people where yeah. they love it. They could play it over and over again, like Dust Two. It's just like something you queue for a lot, something you really appreciate. And like I think it's because it comes down to like comes down to the simplicity, right? Um, the fact that it's very mid centric, and the yeah. round starts up very fast, right? Yeah. You can get up on the boost and see someone in a matter of seconds. Yeah, that makes the the map a little bit more fun, I think. And uh, and so every what I'm trying to say is that for on an individual level, everyone's got a lot of play time on this map, yeah. right? And uh, there's a lot you can do for yourself to open up a pick, mm -hmm. right? You can go up on boost and win the round by yourself sometimes if you're able to just kill both people, right? Yeah. You get the first guy on the first bullet, and then you see the other person, maybe say you take a little bit of damage and you, you kill them. But there, if you have mid, you get two kills, you instantly win. And there yeah. aren't, aren't a lot of maps you can do that. Like Mirage, you could run up a ramp, right? But you'll almost always get smoked out. You'll probably get naded, and people will watch the smoke. Yeah. It's not... There's not you can't open up the round in five seconds. Yeah. So it's it's uh it's it's kind of like Dust Two in the sense that Dust Two has mid. It starts up right away because they're uh, you can spot the people crossing, and it's in a matter of moments that if you have a good opera, for example, he can shine right there. Right. He doesn't have to like work into somebody else's angle on T side. Mm -hmm. He can kind of just he can just take uh, on his own volition just start up and end around really quickly for sure and now you're mentioning cash being the staple map the one that the one map that people play a lot at least in north america when i'm actually queuing these third party um systems to actually get these matchmaking going but in europe do you think it's kind of the same do you think cash is that map that's played the most here for the for matchmaking style as well i think it's just one of the most perfect maps so like uh, i think it's just universally like uh, people feel very good on it because it's it's pretty ideal like it's uh it's very pure in my opinion mm -hmm. like it's not a random map like yeah. like train can be where it's just like outside it's just a mess sometimes yeah. like cash is very simple everyone knows what's up it's like i'm gonna take this duel and whoever's better will win mm -hmm. and train it's like oh my gosh am i getting shot on the side of the head like yeah. what is what even is that spot like how did you get there right um and that doesn't really happen on cash and i totally agree with you because when you're looking at positionings for the ct sun on cash they're pretty standard you're always going to check that first spot at quad you're always going to look to see if somebody's going to come out squeaky uh, if you're on the t side and you're playing on the ct or is somebody playing on forklift side so there's just angles and areas that you want 
out and try to brush them out from the mollies, from the nades. And when it comes out, it's pure aiming. It's it's pure fragging style. And who has a better outcome of it will, of course, determine uh, whoever wins that uh, that round for the team. I think it's similar to to Dust Two back then, even Dust Two now. It's when you're playing towards long, they're probably going to play towards pit, crossfire towards long area, might be hiding towards that A ramp more than the goose, and then playing towards that elevator side of the car. So there's obvious spots. It's just how do you evolve as a team to have that strategy to actually brush them out and take them out. But actually, before we get on to this first map on cash, we're just going to take a quick break uh, just to reset the stream. And we're back here. More action for actually, we're going to start the action for Call of the North the second day and final day here with Launders and Vansilly. Thank you. 